Hi, this is Miss Delosier, and these are your notes on risk factors. So we're going to be talking about things that increase the probability of a person um, contracting a disease or becoming ill. So the first one is going to be age. There's two main categories of age that we're going to talk about. The first is newborn babies. Uh, newborns are more susceptible to disease because they have an undeveloped immune system and they're unable to remove toxins from the body, primarily because some of their liver enzymes are missing immediately after birth. They also have less stored nutrients, so they can't meet the energy demands of, of combating an illness as readily. And then they're more likely to become cold, partially because they have reduced fat stores and partially because they have a higher surface area to volume ratio. The next category of um, of the next age group that, that we're really concerned about as a risk factor is the elderly. The elderly have a decreased immune function just because as you age, you, you end up getting decreased immune function. Um, and then you also get a general decline in the ability to maintain homeostasis as you age. So as homeostasis is disrupted, it's going to put you more um, at risk of contracting additional uh, illnesses. They also are typically isolated and are subject to malnourishment. So those are going to increase the probability that they contract a disease. The second uh, risk factor we're going to talk about is sex. So some diseases have a higher probability of affecting one gender over another. So the example that we're going to look at, the two examples we're going to look at, the first is in, in men, it's gout. Men have a higher probability of developing gout, which is a buildup of uric acid in the body. And women have a higher probability of developing osteoporosis, which um, you've probably heard of. It's brittle bone disease. The third risk factor is genetics, and that is simply family history of a disease. And, and that's really it. That, that's all for genetics. The fourth risk factor is stress or depression. So stress and depression affect the body differently, um, but they both lead to increased risk. So you end up getting a improper corticosteroid or neurotransmitters, um, and that can disrupt homeostasis in the body. And that gives you a decreased immune function, and then that can lead to a higher probability of contracting a disease. Uh, the th the next risk factor is lifestyle. So we've talked a little about this in class, lifestyle as a risk factor. So we're just going to talk about some really specific aspects of lifestyle that can increase your probability of contracting a disease. The first is diet um, and exercise. And together, those have to do with your weight. Um, being uh, extremely overweight or extremely underweight can increase your probability of certain diseases. Uh, smoking drinking, uh, engaging in unprotected sex. Those are all just examples of how lifestyle can put you more at risk for certain diseases. The next risk factor is occupational, and that's going to be exposure to loud noises, to pollutants, to repetitive motions and movements. Um, if you're in a job that you're constantly moving heavy machinery, you're going to be just more at risk of diseases associated with repetitive motions, crushing injuries, things like that. Pre-existing illnesses are our next, our next risk factor. Um, that's just going to disrupt homeostasis. So if I have a pre-existing illness, um, I am not going to have an immune system that is functioning at optimal level. It's disrupted homeostasis and then I'm going to have a compromised immune system, and that just puts me at higher risk for contracting new diseases. And then the final one is going to be environmental exposure. And so prolonged exposure to a lot of different things can result in um, you contracting a disease or being more likely to contract a disease. So prolonged exposure to extreme hots or extreme colds, prolonged exposure to allergens, uh, to sunlight, and to various chemicals present in your environment. That's it for these notes on risk factors. I hope those were helpful. If you have any questions, please come see me in tutorials.